dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Madison Carmouche. The federal government is facing a deadline and will shut down at 12.01 a.m. on Sunday if a spending measure is not passed. A bipartisan stopgap bill has been agreed on in the Senate and would keep the government funded through November 17th. However, Republicans in the House have threatened to not vote on it because it includes military funding for Ukraine. If the government does shut down, it could have far-reaching effects, including on airlines. Grayson Passmore spoke to travelers at the Bluegrass Airport who share some of their concerns. The looming possibility of a government shutdown hangs over the heads of travelers at the Bluegrass Airport. It's going to affect me. It'll affect my business. It will affect how much money I make for my family. But again, what can I do about it? Aviation workers like traffic controllers and TSA officers are federal employees, so they'll continue working through a shutdown, but they'll be working without pay. We have finally seen cancellations and delays get back down to normal levels, but a shutdown would stop all of that progress. And as we saw during the last shutdown in 2019, the fatigue and low morale could lead to employees calling out and therefore more delays and much longer security lines. For those like Clay Frank who travel for work every few days, this could be bad for business. Worrying about government shutdowns is a lot like worrying about whether my airplane's going to be late. There's nothing I'm going to do about it. And so I just roll with it. And if I get a cancellation, it means I get a day off work. I don't particularly like it. Those with AAA say the best advice they can offer travelers is to constantly check on your flight status online. And if you are worried, they say go ahead and get to the airport at least a couple of hours early. If there are delays, uh, you need to change your plans, anything like that, you have time to do so. And so you're not, you know, running up right up against the, the mark of your travel times. And as always, make sure you pack your patience. In Lexington, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. The potential shutdown could impact our national forests as well. Those with Daniel Boone National Forest say every shutdown is different, but for now they are funded through midnight on Saturday, September 30th. They say they'll notify the public as soon as possible if they have to make any changes to their regular operations. A new study found that the University of Virginia at Wise played a major role in improving the state's economy. The study says that this college contributed $188 million to the state's gross domestic product. The students reportedly spent nearly $17 million during the year, and the university spent more than $22 million in employee compensation. Mountain Comprehensive Care hosted their second recovery rally to bring resources to those battling addiction. Multiple organizations participated in the event. Mountain Comprehensive Care set up a microphone for anyone that wanted to share their story as well. Case manager Celeste Watts says the event can show people help is available. When we have these community events, I think it just makes people under realize that I'm not alone. You know, I'm not fighting this battle alone. There are other people that are going through the same thing that I'm going through. Watts says many agencies have been more urgently reaching out with the increase of fentanyl cases in the region. October marks the start for another busy season for the city of Corbin. The city's dessert week starts on Monday. Corbin Tourism Convention and Commission Executive Director Maggie Munhollen says this is an opportunity to try unique recipes made by businesses in the area for just $6 participating locally owned and operated restaurants in the city limits of Corbin are offering their own culinary creation, um, which is a dessert of some type for $6. So people can go in and try, you know, a variety of desserts throughout the city for just a $6 price point. Munhollen says they expect to see an increase in tourism because of the SOAR Summit that will also be next week in the city. For more information on both events, you can visit our website at WYMT.com. 
Pike County officials gathered in the Flatwood area earlier today to celebrate the opening of a new trail all about adventure. Hillbilly Trails is open to riders dedicating more than 6,000 acres of Appalachian Mountains to ATV riders. The opening of the trail brought folks from all around to the, re to the area with hopes that it will be a tourism magnet for riders of all experience. What draws me to here is the, the beautiful mountains and the scenery that I get to see as I'm on the trail. Uh, when you come out of the trees and you're looking out over the entire uh, uh, mountain ranges, it's, that's just a beautiful draw for me. State leaders gave an update on the U.S. 464 lane road expansion project. They say that it will cost nearly $40 million to improve and expand the highway. While some construction and the, on the project has started, the designing phase is scheduled to begin within the next year. The project will be on the Mountain Parkway starting at Salyersville and US 23 at Paintsville. Children at a Southern Kentucky elementary school were taught about gun safety earlier today. It's a part of the Eddie Eagle Gun Safe program. The program began in Knox County but expanded to all Laurel County schools. This follows the deaths of two children that died in gun incidents since July in the county and another child who died in Corbin just a few weeks ago. Well, statistically, uh, these are the kids that are getting killed at home. So uh, these are the kids that we focus on and, uh, and we try to reach. The mission of the program is to teach students to stop, don't touch, run away, and tell a grown-up. Fall wildfire season in Kentucky begins this Sunday, October 1st. This is a time of year when wildfires are more likely to form and spread. Forestry officials say wildfires in our area are often started by people. Burning in parts of the state is not allowed between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Kentucky's fall wildfire season runs until December 15th. We are tracking some quiet weather across the mountains as we close out your Friday. Those lows back in the upper 50s and lower 60s as you wake up and kick off your weekend. Possibly some areas of dense fog as we go late tonight, also early on your Saturday. And check this out. Some awesome weather on the way as we kick off your weekend. Those temperatures falling into the upper 70s and lower 80s on your Saturday. And we do fall into the upper 50s and lower 60s once again as we get into your Sunday. So some nice weather is on the way into this weekend. If you have any plans, to head up to Lexington for the game between Kentucky and Florida. Some awesome weather is on the way. We stay dry into your Saturday and those temperatures topping out in the upper 70s and lower 80s. So you may need the sunglasses, also the sunscreen if you have any plans to head up to the game. That's the big story this week. We are tracking some very warm conditions out there. We should be in the middle 70s. We top out in the middle 80s on Tuesday, also Wednesday. So about 10 degrees above average by early parts of next week. However, we are watching out for some changes by this time next week, by Friday, also into next weekend. Some cooler air set to move back into the mountains. So we are giving you that first alert to be on the lookout for some cooler air by Friday. Also next weekend, also watching out for our next rain chance by this time next week as well. Here's a look at your community trust bank. Seven day forecast for the weekend is always in view, tracking a stretch of dry. Also warm weather across the mountains for this weekend. Also into early next week. We stay dry on Saturday. Also Sunday and those temperatures topping out in the upper 70s and lower 80s, middle 80s on Monday and Tuesday and then more middle 80s on Wednesday and Thursday. But again, we are watching out for some changes by this time next week as a cold front begins to move across the region. So more showers are possible by next Friday and those highs back in the middle 70s as we kick off next weekend.